Okay, you'll see here that I've added some wire ties. I just went through every basically spot where every other LED or every two LEDs and just kind of used a small wire tie and wrapped it around and secured the strip to the board. Again, uh, double check to make sure that you put the input in down here by the project box because you um, you want to connect the Arduino board to the input end of this in order to feed signals to the strip. Okay, now I've cut off the excess uh, wire ties that were sticking out here. So <clears throat> now we've uh, got our strip ready to where we can start. We can cut some wires and uh, get, get them ready to uh, solder onto the pads here on the end of the input end of the, of the uh, light strip. So I'm going to use um, six different colors here, but basically I'm going to make sure I use my black and red for uh, the ground and my positive or uh, plus side. Uh, and then I'll use four other colors here to uh, help me keep track of which, uh, which pin I'm using on the... Uh, or which connector I'm using on the on the light strip so that I'll know which pin it needs to connect to on the Arduino board. Okay, I've got my six color wires here. I've cut off, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe a little less than a foot or so of wire for each length just to give me enough room to play with. And I've also stripped the end of them uh, oh, a little over an eighth of an inch maybe or so. Uh, you just want them long enough basically to where you're, you've got enough room to solder and they're not going to leave a lot of extra so um, so I'm going to start off um, on one end here and I'm going to solder the black wire to the GND or ground connection again making sure that I'm on the input end of the strip um, and I'll basically go ahead and solder this one on, let it cool, and then I'll move on to the next one and so forth and and um, until I get all of them soldered. Okay, now I've finished soldering all of the wires. I made sure that, they're, that the little solder pads didn't have so much solder on them that they were trying to connect to each other. Um, it takes a little practice. Sometimes they do run together if you get too much solder on there and, and you can't let that happen. They've got to be separate connections. So, Okay, and I've run the wires kind of back over here. I've cut another little notch out in the project box here so that I can run my wires inside. And at this point I'm ready to kind of route the wires and figure out about how long they need to be. Um, because I'm getting ready to kind of cut them off, strip the ends, and then I'll solder the ends of them onto these header connectors here. Um, now in the first version of this all I did was strip the end of the wire and plug it into uh, the little holes on the pins on the Arduino board and that worked fine for a long time so uh, don't necessarily need these header pins that just um, you know, just makes it to where it's a little bit cleaner and it gets a little bit more solid connection but you can use those wires plugged in there as well so uh, I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of flack from the uh, geek and electronic community out there about all of that but trying to keep it simple for everybody that doesn't have all the uh, extra skills and parts to do all this kind of stuff so um, so just keep that in mind when you're when you're doing all this stuff. You can cut a cut a few corners if you need to, but anyway, I'm gonna route the uh, route the wires to the to the area on the Arduino board where it needs to connect, and then I'll cut them off, strip the ends, and solder solder them onto the headers here so that I can get ready to plug them in. Okay, so I've got kind of got the wires now routed where they need to go. I've got the uh, black and red wire routed to the side where the plus five, five volts and the um, ground pins are on the Arduino are here. Um, 
and also the black and red or positive and negative from the uh, rotary switch will also be connecting to those same pins so I've got those two wires routed kind of to the same area the blue and white wires here uh, the blue wire is going to connect to pin 10 in the PWM area uh, on the Arduino board, the pulse width modulation area and um, the white wire will connect to uh, pin 9 and the yellow wire here will connect to pin 4 and the green wire will connect to pin 3 so I've got green to 3, yellow to 4, white to 9, blue to 10. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut off these wires here about in this area uh, to kind of get them all uniform now that I've got all these wires routed. And then I'll strip off the end of them and solder the wires to the header pins uh, so that I can get ready to plug them into the Arduino board. Okay, I've finished soldering the wires onto the headers and I've got them plugged into the Arduino board here now. Um, <clears throat> so I've got the blue wire connected to pin 10 on the Arduino, white wire connected to pin 9, yellow wire connected to pin 4, green wire connected to pin 3, the red wires from both the strip and the rotary switch are connected to the 5 volt connection on the Arduino. I think I need to move that over one actually. Okay. Got the reset 3 volt, 5 volt, ground. There's two grounds. Okay. So Got to connect to the 5 volt and the black wires are connected to ground and then the brown wire from the rotary switch uh, is connected to pin 5 in the analog area. So we have it completely wired up now. I'm going to go ahead and button up the uh, project box here and uh, put the screws in and we'll be ready to give it a test. Okay, I've got it all, all the case screwed back together here and everything's mounted and ready to go. So in order to, I've already downloaded a program to it, so I'm going to go ahead and plug the power in here. And I've got my first program selected. And I'll go ahead and push the button to give it power. Uh, I think I've got a five second delay on this, so... Basically, it should start lighting up here, and there it goes. So, it was a success. Okay, now this part is all preference. This, uh, I've kind of experimented with a few different things, but uh, this is just my own preference on how I like it to look, but... Uh, it all depends on what I'm doing too. You can either leave the the uh, LEDs bare like this, or what I've done here is I've got a half a piece of some uh, plastic, white plastic pipe. Uh, basically, I cut it down the middle, and I'm going to use some wire ties basically to kind of fix it over the over the LEDs to. Um, kind of diffuse the light a little bit so that uh, there won't be so the lines won't be so defined in the light painting so uh, again this is just preference and you can use pretty much anything you would like to use I've used some opaque pipe and this white pipe and just kind of a clear pipe with some uh, uh, crystalline kind of spray for to use for frosting glass over the top of it and all sorts of different experiments trying to trying to see what it looks like you know diffused with different types of things but um, this is kind of what I've settled on and what I like and so I'm going to uh, use some wire ties and put this 
half piece of white pipe over the top of it and that'll help diffuse it a little bit. Okay, so I have the pipe secured over the top of the LEDs and you'll see here that that kind of as soon as the LEDs come on that it kind of diffuses it out and, and it makes it to where there's not such a defined point of light with all of that. So that pretty much ends the uh, video tutorial on creating this uh, light painting tool. I hope you enjoy it and I look forward to um, seeing what kind of pictures some folks come up with out there. So uh, let me know what you think about it.